Welcome to the Western Association for College Admissions Counseling Virtual College Fair. Thank you for joining us. A few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Your camera and microphone are off so the panelists cannot see or hear you. This is just one of many different sessions happening, so be sure to sign up for additional sessions. And this presentation is being recorded and will be available within about a week at strivescan.com slash W-A-C-A-C. And now I'd like to turn it over to our first presenter from Southern Oregon University. Take it away. Hello everyone, my name is Alana Jassen and I'm an admissions counselor from Southern Oregon University and thank you all for joining me this evening. So Southern Oregon University, also known as SLU, is located in Ashland, Oregon. So we're at the very, very, very bottom of Oregon on the California and Oregon border and we're what I like to call a medium town. So we're just over 22,000 normal residents. And Ashland is known for a couple of things, mainly the Oregon Shakespeare Festival. So our town is very artsy, very eclectic. eclectic. It features a lot of unique restaurants and shops that are very um, special to the area. Um, there are also a lot of things to do outdoors. But probably one of my favorite things besides you know, all the cool restaurants and places you can go in Ashland is the weather. Um, we have all four seasons, but there's nothing too extreme um, anywhere. So it doesn't get too hot, it doesn't get too cold. And it really does make the taking advantage of the outdoors and all the parks, lakes, um, and Mount Ashland and all those um, opportunities, very great to do year round. So definitely a lot to do. And then our downtown area is right down the street from the main campus at SLU. So it's a quick 10 to 12 minute walk from the main campus. So SLU, um, we're at Gilbert, our speedy on town. We are a medium school. We're just over 6,000 um, students and our average class size is 21. And then we have 38 majors, but over 100 different academic pro um, programs. So we have a lot of different concentrations. Some of our most popular majors include business, criminal justice, education, so teaching, um, theater, pre-med, psychology. We also offer some majors in film, art, outdoor adventure leadership, and then our newest minor, esports management. And we also um, boast like pre-law or again, um, pre-med like programs as well. But half of our majors are also, also offered in a three-year program. Um, components. So if you want to finish your degree in a time affected and cost effective way, you can definitely do one of our three-year programs. So you can graduate earlier, move on to a graduate school, or just um, go to a career a lot faster. So we do offer those programs as well. So SLU is a very tight-knit community. We are a smaller school, so you really are going to get to know your peers and professors, mostly on a first-name basis, so you really get to know everyone around you. Um, we have over 60 different clubs, and they range from more academic-focused clubs to more for fun clubs, like our ghost hunting club, our biology club, our honor society, just to name a few. There are also a lot of opportunities for research, career assistance, internships, and jobs, but we, SLU is is really a place that you can be yourself. We give a lot of individual attention. So students who may have learning differences or just places or just um, want to really take advantage of what college has to offer to you, you can definitely get really involved and it's pretty easy. And we're definitely very mindful of students who come from different backgrounds and have different identities. We're definitely making sure that we're mindful of that and addressing you in the ways that you want to be addressed. As well. We also have sports, so we're part of the NAIA and we have 13 varsity sports. Um, it's really easy to apply to SLU and one of my um, three different things that I always like to point out, one, we're rolling admissions, so you can apply throughout the year, there's no strict deadlines on when you need to apply. We are a test optional school, so we do not require a SAT or ACT score at all. 
but also holistic reviews. So we look at the whole application, so not just your GPA. So we do a set of letters of recommendations, essays, written statements, any test stores that can also be used to support your application. So don't fret if you don't have the highest GPA or you have some academic struggle. We're definitely willing to work with you as a student and we definitely want to see what other places you shine in. SLU is also a WUI school, and we actually make it the WUI as simple as it can be, meaning that there are no requirements, there's no restrictions, all majors require, all majors are in the WUI, and as you can see, there is a big discount between um, out-of-state tuition and the WUI tuition, so as long as you're from one of these territories on this map, you will receive the WUI as well. We also have merit-based scholarships too, based off a of GPA that will be placed on top of the ruling if you qualify for them. And they're automatic merit-based too, so you don't have to do anything about that either. So how to apply. So there's a lot of ways you can get connected to with SLU. Um, we currently host virtual and in-person um, campus tours. So if you do want to visit us, you can visit us in person or visit us virtually, just depending on your preference. If you do also, we do also hold a lot of um, virtual application workshops, presentations, informational sessions. So if you're wanting to get in contact with us, you can just visit our website, slu.edu um, slash admissions. Or if you're ever wanting to get in contact with us in another way, this is our main um, means to get in contact with us, which is our email admissions at slu.edu. That is my email as well, which is jacksona6 at slu.edu. Again, you can you can um, set up Zoom appointments with us, um, set up like informational sessions, whatever you want. We definitely want to make sure that we are being accessible to our students. And if you have any questions about anything we've all messed with you, just let us know. Well, again, thank you so much for having me um, this evening. If you have any more questions, you can put them in the Q and A or reach out to me in any one of those means. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we'll be hearing from Eastern Oregon University. Hi, uh, good afternoon. Thanks for joining us this evening. I'm just going to share my screen super quick and awesome. All right. Um, well, hi, uh, my name is Allison. I'm the Portland Regional Admissions Counselor for Eastern Oregon University. I'm also a graduate of EOU. I'm originally coming from a small town called Los Angeles where I really, you know, I noticed everyone in my graduating class was applying to the same handful of schools. So I really wanted a really uh, unique experience with my college undergraduate. Uh, courses. So I studied psychology at Eastern and I you know, had a great time there. Um, so first off, if you've never been to Eastern Oregon, uh, we are in La Grande. Uh, so we're about four hours from Portland if you're heading on the 84 East. It's a small town. We have about 13,000 people, but we are the largest town in our county. Um, so you really get that neighborly community feel where you know everyone around you, your neighbors know you, your community knows you. And that's one of the recurring themes you're going to hear throughout this quick presentation. Um, so if you're into the outdoors, we have a lot of different opportunities for you. Wallawa Lake is about eight miles around in, camp, in um, radius if you're taking a lap around the shore. There's about 1,500 acres of outdoor activities for students. Anthony Lakes, if you're into skiing and snowboarding and any sort of snow sports, there's about 300 inches of snow every single year. So there's always a lot of different activities to go on there. And my personal favorite was Morgan Lake. This is about, I'd say, two miles from campus and so not too far at all. Um, it's a very quiet, tranquil, docile place to be. There's no motors or engines allowed on the water, so you can kind of go hang out, do homework, relax, fish, swim, camp, all that's totally free. Um, and it's right pretty much in your backyard from campus. So speaking of campus, we have about 1,500 students on campus. So we are one of the smaller schools in the Pacific Northwest. Um, so we kind of the best of both worlds. On one hand, we are a four-year public institution which means we're very affordable for a lot of students, but also you get the smaller class sizes of uh, private schools. So with that, a lot of benefits come. Our average class is less than 25 students. Our smallest class is two students. So for us, that face-to-face -face time is really the most important thing. So when you're building those relationships and um, you know, getting letters of recommendation for a graduate school or an internship or a job after college, if those three things are really important for you, Consider you know, those smaller classes where you can actually build that relationship with your professor and they know you as an individual. You're not just one of 300 in a lecture hall. Um, so we have a couple of our programs listed here. We got started as a teaching college back in the 1920s. So that's always been a very strong foundation for us. I studied psychology and health studies, but I also took classes in computer science, um, music production, uh, health and wellness, uh, 
theater, just a real wide mix of liberal arts classes to really help make my degree very, very unique. Um, if we don't offer a program that you're interested in, we also have partnership programs across the country. So you can actually minor in at any other university and do integrated studies programs and still get your degree from us, but have lots of different mixes in with that. So your education is truly unique to you. We have study abroad programs in every single continent except for Antarctica, so sorry about that. Um, but yeah, lots of different ways to study abroad, lots of scholarships available, and it's the least expensive time in your entire life when you're in college to travel and see the world, so highly recommend. Uh, student support services, this could honestly be its own presentation by itself, but long story short is that anything we can do to make you a better student will never be at cost to you. So free tutoring, um, free healthcare on campus, um, disability services, if you ever need some sort of accommodation for a class or anything to make you a better student is gonna be totally free for you. Just come in and ask. Okay, so with that, we have lots of different clubs and organizations. Uh, we have the only trap shooting club in, or the only accredited trap shooting club in the state, and they do pretty well. Um, our One Up Game Club, they do a lot of really cool work and get scholarships for their sports as well. But one of my personal favorites was called the Outdoor Adventure Program. So with that, you have hiking, skiing, snowboarding, kayaking, canoeing, rock climbing, swimming, camping, all totally free for students. You just show your student ID, rent the equipment, and you're on your way. Um, we really want students to take advantage of what's right there in their backyard. So for athletics, we are in the NAIA, National Association of Intercollegiate Athletes. So we're about the size of a D2, but the biggest difference is that the majority of our scholarship funding goes back to students in the form of scholarships, or athletic funding goes back to students in the form of scholarships. Our two newest additions are women's lacrosse and men's baseball. If you have any questions, check out eusports.com for all the um, coaches' contact info. Uh, you are required your first year to live on campus, so we just find students have a much higher success rate with those built-in networks and a foundation of success. So you're never gonna have more than five students living in a suite and you have a couple different options when it comes to laying out your room. Um, singles and doubles are what's offered right now. And um, they're between uh, 10,000 and $12,000, including um, meals and everything for the entire year. Cost of attending, um, so tuition and fees, and that's including you know pretty much everything that you would need. So including your uh, room and board, it's about $22,000 for the entire year. And there's lots of scholarships that come to help bring that cost down. Um, scholarships are open, so uh, feel free to apply. Um, there are a couple that have expired, but that's totally okay. You're still in the running. Just have your GPA and um, official transcript set to go. If you have a 2.75 applying as a freshman and you finish these five core requirements with a C minus or higher, you're automatically admitted. There's no SAT required, and right now our application is actually free, so just hop online. It takes about 15 minutes, and you're on your way. And then if you have any questions, please, please, please feel free to reach out to me. I love talking about Eastern. Um, I am here for you. Connect with your admissions counselor. Take a screenshot of this slide and then feel free to send me an email or schedule a one-on-one -on -one appointment. I'd love to meet with you. Have a great day. Thanks. Thank you. Next, we'll be hearing from Linfield University. Hello, everyone. One second. Let me share my screen. Uh, well, my name is Ryan. I am one of the admission counselors here at uh, Linfield University. And, um, you know, Linfield just became a university. You might have known us as Linfield College before, but as of January 1st, uh, July 1st, excuse me, we became Linfield University. Uh, so we are here in McMinnville, Oregon. We are on 190 acre or 189 acre uh, campus, and we have just over 1,400 students here. Within McMinnville, we have about 33,000 residents, and we're centrally located. Uh, between Portland, uh, the Oregon coast, and um, and Salem. So we're just a couple hours away from Mount Hood. Uh, we have an 11 to 1 student to faculty ratio here, and 85% of our classes will have fewer than 22 students. Uh, on the McMinnville campus, it is home to the College of our Arts and Sciences, which has 43 different majors, and our School of Business, which has seven different majors. And you can see the most popular ones here on this screen. Um, the School of Business, again, like I said, is on the, the McMinnville campus as well. Um, we do, when you come here, you would have a academic advisor and a faculty advisor to help guide you through in selecting a major because you don't have to select one until you're the end of your sophomore year. Uh, we also have a Portland campus and this is gonna be home to our School of Nursing. And it's the oldest school of nursing in the Pacific Northwest. We just moved to a new campus on uh, the east side of Portland, kind of by the airport. 
there's about 350 students that are here on that campus. And students who complete all four years at Linfield, uh, they would have an easier track into this, um, into this program. They would be uh, the first to be looked at in a very competitive field. And uh, yeah, we'd definitely love to talk more about that if that is an area of interest for you. Because here you'd be doing multiple clinical hours. And the biggest thing is we do have a 93% first time pass rate on the NCLEX to become a nurse. Uh, we do have three different facets to our uh, curriculum. So it would be the Linfield curriculum, which you see some categories here, but we have our general electives, which you'd be looking at. And then uh, the third would be our uh, major specific classes. And we are a liberal arts institution, and you know, we believe in our Linfield curriculum to help give you that breadth of knowledge to really figure out uh, what your passions are and help you figure out a solid major for yourself, which will excel you in the future. And part of that um, success that students will have here does come from student and faculty collaborative research or internships that they do. And here are some examples. And this is actually a student who is working within our chemistry lab with our faculty over a uh, summer project. And we do sometimes are able to offer uh, these to be paid collaborative research projects as well. We do study abroad programs. So we go to 15 different countries and uh, we do offer a first, your first round trip airfare to be free and covered by the university. And about 40% of our students will study abroad before they graduate. And we offer semester long programs in January because we are on a 414 system. So four months in spring, a January term and four months, uh, four months in fall, I said that in reverse. But um, yeah, it's a great opportunity for a, in our January term for students to pick up from Linfield study abroad with a Linfield professor and your Linfield classmates, and you come back here. On our campus experience, we have um, a whole bunch of different clubs and organizations. We have over 300 different leadership positions. We have four sororities and three fraternities, and about 20%, uh, 15, 20% of our students will participate in uh, fraternity or sorority life before they graduate. We do have on campus a Hispanic celebration in the fall, a Hawaiian luau in spring, and Wild Stock, which is a concert to celebrate the end of the year. Um, and we do have artists like uh, Dan and Shay and, and others that have been able to come. As far as residence life goes, we have 15 different residence halls. We have co-ed, single gender, gender inclusive, a pet friendly dorm. Um, so lots of different options here for all of our students. We have a three year living requirement, but 75% of our students will live here through all four years. Uh, we are NC2A D3. We have 20, 21 different NC2A teams and about 30% of our students are athletes here. Within our application, we are on the Common app and uh, we do, it's a free application. We are going test blind, so we're not looking for a, a SAT or ACT score. And again, it's a free application for you just for applying you will be qualified for all of our, our merit-based scholarships and additional need-based aid scholarships here. Um, our average tuition, or excuse me, our average financial aid package is just over $40,000. 99% of our students will receive financial aid and our direct cost this year is just under $58,000. And if you are interested in visiting us, we'd love to have you here. Uh, we are open for, for tours. Uh, at the moment, you just have to be a 2021 20, fall applicant, uh, but we are looking to try to get additional students here and open that up. Uh, but when you're here on campus, you can meet with me, you can meet with financial aid. If you're interested in, um, in playing sports, you can also meet with a coach if that option is available. So thank you, and I'll hand it over now. Thank you. Next, we'll be hearing from Verto Education. Awesome, thank you. I'm gonna go ahead and also share my screen. Um, great, so my name is Lainey. I am with Verto Education. Um, for those of you who have not heard of Verto, we are a little bit different um, than a lot of the colleges here. So what we offer is actually a fully accredited um, college semester traveling abroad. So we're trying to put that study abroad front and center for students. Um, so we have a, a couple different options. I'm gonna go ahead and 
see if my computer will let me go through these slides. I'm not going to play the video because they're very choppy on Zoom, I've learned. Um, so Virto Education, our mission overall is to provide more students from every background and um, all across the states with an easier and more affordable streamlined access to higher education and international travel. So that breaks down into three main pillars of ours. So the first pillar is the best first year of college, really setting you guys up for success. The second pillar is admissions to a great fit school, which is where I talk about our partner schools in just a sec. And then the third pillar is affordability, of course. Um, so the best first year of college. So Virto, we have offered two different types of semesters. Um, so we have on-campus semesters and field semesters. These are pretty different in a lot of ways, but they both keep the same core Virto components. Those components are the academics, of course, um, 16 full college credits per semester. So those, those are freshman gen ed credits. So our semesters are really accessible for students regardless of major. Um, so same, you know, writing, history, English, sociology courses, you're gonna have to take no matter what. But our classes are, um, they're interwoven with, with different field experiences. So we're partnering with organizations on the field. So you're actually working side by side with community members. If you're taking you know, an environmental science course, you're working on environmental science projects. If you're taking international business, you're meeting with CEOs of huge corporations, um, et cetera, et cetera. So we also have small class sizes and one-on-one -on -one mentorship within our classes. Um, our All of our courses are taught by Virto professors. It definitely does become like a, a family, which is pretty awesome. Um, and yeah, weekly um, weekly meetings with each individual student and their professors and our class sizes are 20 to 25 students max. Um, the support services, we definitely have quite a few of those aside from the professors and our program leaders that are, um, I guess, more like mentors on the ground. Um, we do have some um, academic, success coaches here in the States. We've got a five to one student staff ratio. We have affinity groups for our students. Um, and we also weave in a purpose finding workshop throughout the semesters um, just to help students, yeah, really hit the ground running and understand more what they want to be focusing on um, with their college and career and lives. Um, so these are all of our semesters abroad. We've got England, Italy, and Spain and Europe, Hawaii, Latin America, and South Pacific. Those are our field semesters. The England, Italy, and Spain, those are our campus semesters, um, which I briefly mentioned on a second ago. So this is an example of one of the campus semesters in London. Um, you can see the course selection. Basically, you, you choose four to five classes that you would want to take. You're living in a student residence on campus. So in Europe, you're in big cities. They're very vibrant. It's full of international students as well. So you're really getting that, that more study abroad feel. Um, you can see in London, these are you can't see, I took the slide out. Um, in London, yeah, so aside from taking the classes, you're also doing a lot of different excursions. We're doing day trips um, and some overnight trips as well as a group. Um, the field semesters, very unlike traditional college semesters. Um, you're traveling around to different countries. Every month you're in a different location, um, whether that's a different country altogether or in a different uh, village or local town. We're staying in hotels, homestays, base houses, so very different um, than on campus. And it is a block schedule. So you're only taking four courses of these and you're focusing on one class each month with an overall umbrella course. These are very, very hands-on. So if you're really into adventure um, and learning with your hands as much as your head, then this is a great example for you. Um, these are some of the excursions for Fiji, Australia, New Zealand, absolutely our most popular program by far, but um, Hawaii, and Latin America are also very popular. So the second pillar, admissions to a great fit school. So this is when our partner colleges come into play. Um, so the application to Virto, it is free, it's non-binding. We do have a rolling admissions. Um, with the application process, when you apply to Virto, you can um, choose up to five of our partner colleges if you're interested in applying to those. So it is a free application to those schools. Um, and I will show you a slide of those in just a sec. We have 56 partner colleges at this time, um, including um, like University of Oregon and Lewis and Clark, which are here today, which is really exciting. Hi, guys. Um, so there are definitely some benefits to partnering, um, partnering with these colleges. You can see here we really have partner universities all across the states, big, small, public, private. Um, they're all up on our website. 
We also have a transfer guarantee. So if you do complete a semester or two with Virto, um, depending on the college, you're guaranteed admission into one of our 27 um, colleges. And I will wrap it up very quickly. Last but not least, affordability. Um, the tuition varies depending on the semester, but it does include um, everything except for flights to the country and the cost of books. So your food is covered, your lodging is covered, um, all the excursions are covered as well. So between 15 and 25,000. We do offer um, opportunity grants, scholarships. We accept FAFSA or any federal aid, um, as well as some other things as well. And I believe that is it. If you are interested, feel free to scan the code. Um, you can check out our website as well. And that is all from me. Thank you. Next, we'll be hearing from Lewis and Clark College. Hello. Okay, great. I hope you can see my screen here. I cannot see my own. Um, thank you so much for being here this evening. Really appreciate it. Um, I'm excited to talk to you about Lewis and Clark. My name is Reggie Collins, and I work for Lewis and Clark College. I'm one of the assistant deans here. We are located in beautiful Portland, Oregon. We're about six miles from downtown. We're a small liberal arts college, about 2,000 students. And I really just wanna focus on a couple of the things that really make us the most unique with our partners and our, and our colleagues that are here tonight. So I really just wanna uh, highlight a couple of those things here. So first we are liberal arts college, just like some of the other colleges here tonight, but we have this thirds model that I really think is really special at Lewis and Clark. So there are lots of majors that you can choose from and uh, about 29 and 31 minors. And of those minors, we actually have a new one this year, which is health studies. We're very excited to offer that um, and came completely from student demand. And it's really exciting to see. But many students, uh, every single student, you do not have to choose your major until the end of your sophomore year. And I think that really allows for students to follow these three paths. You know, one third of your education is going to be your major, one third are going to be your gen eds or your general education, where you get a lot of choice in each of these categories. And then another third is going to be your electives as well. Some of the more popular majors we have are psychology, is number one, um, SOAN, which is short for sociology and anthropology, bio, biochem, those are huge, huge departments at Lewis and Clark, English and computer science. I always like to honorable mention political science, international affairs, environmental studies, those will always be very popular. And some that won't be as popular, but are great and awesome and things we do have is studio art and art history, music with three concentrations and theater with three concentrations as well. Um, one thing that I think makes us pretty unique are our six annual academic symposia. These are completely student um, run and student led. They handle all of the logistics and they bring uh, amazing people to campus to give presentations and they give presentations themselves. So my personal favorite one is actually the Ray Warren race and ethnic studies one. This year it happened to be completely virtual, although we do have people on campus. Um, it was cool because we had an amazing poet who talked about the black experience in America and a uh, professor from UCLA who talked about immigration and he's a big, big expert and author on those things. So it was really cool to see that. Um, the environmental studies one is very well attended. This year was conservation conversation. Uh, but what's great about this and I, I just wanna highlight quickly is you know, all six of them, many, many students get involved. They're doing academic work outside of the classroom. And it is a great way to get something on your resume on top of all those internships and job shadows, because it is really difficult when you're 22 years old and just graduating from college to have a, a very fleshed out resume. And this is a really nice thing to have on there that I think is unique uh, at Lewis and Clark as well. Next is our four, five, six commitment. Uh, again, we are a small liberal arts college. Like I said, about 2000 students. So really we are committed that you will graduate from Lewis and Clark in four years. Um, you will get your bachelor's degree. If you have to stay for a ninth semester, we will take care of it financially. We're very happy about that as well. It really has to do with our academic advising. They will keep you on track, get you a nice four year plan and you will not um, have, we don't have things like impacted majors or worrying about getting to the class classes that you need. The five and the six are actually our programs with our graduate schools. So we have the five, which is a four plus one with your MAT, Masters of Arts in Teaching. 
Many students uh, have done that for many years. Newer is actually the six year program, which is a three plus three uh, with our own law school. The law school is uh, very famous for its environmental law program. It is the number one environmental law program in the country, but they do have other law degrees. They also have uh, masters um, in legal studies as well, but uh, three years at the undergraduate campus and three years at the law school to get your JD. So it's a really nice accelerated um, program that a lot of students have been really interested in over the last few years. Another thing that I think sets us apart is our college outdoors program. They just so happen to have my absolute favorite um, Instagram of all of the offices on campus, but many students get out into the mountains, get to the state parks, get to the rivers, the lakes, the ocean, um, all very easily. And I think a lot of students want to have that balance of being able to go to the city and explore all, you know, all the big things and the companies and the culture and the food and the theater and the music and the sports and everything, but they also want to get out into nature and do urban hikes and all of these things. And College Outdoors is so great from their um, trail running trips to their marmot research and mushroom identification, their surfing on the Oregon coast. All these trips happen multiple times a month all year round and either have a nominal fee or are completely free. Um, so 90% of our students go on one of these trips, and I think it's great to show because we have 47 different states represented, students coming from all over the country, and they have varying uh, levels of experience in this, and so it's really cool to see students uh, be able to do this every single year as well. Another thing that we're known for, and it's great that so many schools are talking about it today, um, is our study abroad. I really do believe it's something that is something we're, we're very much specialized in. Our overseas office is a well-oiled machine, and 60% of our students participate in one of these trips. The national average tends to be 10 to 15%. We have 35 overseas programs um, that are focused on maybe major specific, language specific, or even regional area study. Next, um, and the big reason it's so popular is financial aid applies and there is pre-approved academic credit. So the last thing I'll talk about is just the, how to apply. These are the four things. We are completely test optional. We're on the Common App along with the other, some of the other institutions here and, and it's completely free as well. And our deadlines are done if you're a senior now, but it is November 1st and January 15th. So if you wanna find your counselor, you can go to this page here and I will put my email address at the end. So thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Lastly, we'll be hearing from the University of Oregon. Hi, everyone. My name is Loretta Klosterman, and I am with the University of Oregon. I'm actually regionally based here in California. So for many of you, I am your local admissions counselor. Well, the University of Oregon is located in the city of Eugene. We are two hours south of Portland and about three and a half hours away from the California border. And then we're equidistant between the Cascade Mountains and the Oregon coast. Just like all my colleagues have described today, uh, Oregon is an incredible place for outdoor recreation, really all of the Pacific Northwest. And our students definitely have access to hiking, biking, and even water sports within footsteps of the university. Eugene really is that quintessential college town environment where there is this great sense of pride that Eugene is home to the University of Oregon. We are considered a mid-size institution. Our total enrollment is about 22,000. However, our undergraduate population is just shy of 19,000 students. So we really do focus on that undergraduate education. Our student population is quite diverse and eclectic. We have students from all 50 states and 101 different countries. So our students are studying and living with students from all walks of life and all backgrounds. And in my opinion, that really enhances the college experience. We have a lot of different academic programs to choose from at the U of O. Some of the ones that we are most known for include architecture, business, marine biology, environmental studies, human physiology, journalism, just to name a few. But you also don't have any pressure to know your major when you apply to the U of O. We recognize that when you get to college, you are gonna be exposed to a lot of different academic programs. So if that means taking that first year or even two years to explore and really figure out what you're passionate about, you have the ability to do so without getting behind in your four year graduation plan. In fact, our most popular major for incoming first year students is exploring. And that is also what we, um, we call undecided. 
We are a tier one research institution and we are a member of the AAU, the Association of American Universities. We are one of 65 institutions in the United States and Canada to be an invited member of the AAU. As a member of the AAU, we are being recognized for excellence in academic research as well as education. 75% of our undergraduate students do participate in some element of research. This could be partnering with a professor or doing your own independent research. There's a lot of new things happening at the U of O. We have been busy this last year. For one, we finished renovations on Hayward Field, which is our iconic track and field stadium, and very excited to host global events like the World Championships for Track and Field and the Olympic Trials for Track and Field. With the opening of its new first building this fall, the Phil and Penny Knight Campus for Accelerated Scientific Impact is allowing our students to tap into new opportunities and expertise in applied science and brings engineering to the University of Oregon. So we're excited to have bioengineering as one of our newest minors, as well as data science and neuroscience as one of our newest majors. We really do want our students to establish that strong sense of community as soon as you get to the U of O. So we do require all of our first year students to live on campus. Our students have the ability to live in an academic residential community, also known as an ARC. These are themed living learning environments and give our students the opportunities to live with others who have similar interests and who are like-minded. There is no doubt that the U of O has tons of campus spirit and campus community. With over 300 student clubs and organizations, it really shows that our students are connected and invested within the campus life and the campus culture. We are home to Division I athletics. We are known for sports such as football and basketball, but we are most famously known for track and field. Fun fact, Eugene's nickname is Tracktown USA. Now talking about the application process, our application has um, is still open for seniors and students can be admitted on a space available basis, but we do what's called a holistic evaluation at the U of O. So we are going to look at you as a student as well as an individual. We do require you to submit a personal statement as well as an activities list so we can get a sense of how you're involved in outside of the classroom. We are a permanently test optional institution, so that means students no longer have to submit test scores to to be eligible for admission. Students can apply through the Common Application, the Co Coalition Application, or the Oregon app, which is on our website, but these are some of the deadlines to be aware of. November 1 is our early action deadline, and regular decision is January 15th. We absolutely have no uh, preference of what deadline you apply by. Each applicant has uh, the same opportunity for admission. Now, talking about financial aid, we do offer merit scholarships for our students. Merit scholarships are automatic consideration as soon as you apply to the U of O. In response to the pandemic, we did remove the test score requirement for merit scholarship consideration. I will note that this policy may change in the future, so just keep an eye on our website. You can even check in with me for the most up-to-date information. We also have other scholarships like stamps and diversity excellence that have a merit component, but it also requires a separate application. So you just want to be mindful of some of those application processes when it comes to our scholarships. We also announced about a year ago the Oregon Guarantee, and the Oregon Guarantee means the cost of tuition is fixed and will not rise through the completion of your degree or up to five years of education. So this is our commitment to you to be able to financially plan for college. This is my contact information. I will also place it in the chat, but thank you so much. Thank you. Um, I'd just like to invite all of the reps back on now for um, a round of Q&A to just share what advice you would give someone going through the college search process and you can respond in the same order that you presented in. Um, I can't hear, it's, If you want, you could send your response in the chat, I guess. <laughs> um, um, the best tip that I would say for students looking for colleges would really be to contact your admissions counselor. 
there is no such thing as a dumb question. We've heard it all before, or if we haven't, we are here to help you. That's our job. Without students, we, you know, we wouldn't really have much to do. Um, so ask your admissions counselor. There's a lot of differences between colleges. So just every school you're looking at applying to, try to figure out those differences and what's most important to you. Uh, yeah, I would definitely, you know, kind of second what Alassane said. Um, you know, you want to be able to talk to the admission counselor. It's our job to really help you uh, figure out if this is a good fit for you, if this is going to be some place that you can really flourish and uh, really buy in and get all the experiences that are going to benefit you uh, for what you need. And, um, yeah, you want to call that place home. And if you can, more than anything, visit it in person because that helps more than anything as well. Yeah, I mean, seconding <laughs> what, what these guys said, um, but I think just, um, yeah, just trying to take a step back and um, if you can, like, be really organized or s sort of organized about um, doing your college searches and really just figuring out what are the, the top priorities, what are the most important things for you and sort of um, just kind of rifling through those and, um, yeah, just be open minded and there's no such thing as too much communication. Don't play it cool. With colleges we love it when you keep in touch yeah i'll definitely reiterate that as well i definitely think reaching out and communicating is great so i'll go a little different and say check out the catalog i do think a lot of people don't think about looking at the college classes and actually looking at the department if you get excited about just the title of a college class at the school that you're interested in um, that might be a good indicator that you're interested uh, in going there or that that might be a good fit for you or a good major for you I think these are all tough answers to, or great answers to follow up with. And I would echo the same. I will also say as a university that's not open to campus visitors, we are having a very robust virtual programming, even for our juniors this, excuse me, this spring. So I really encourage you to even look at virtual opportunities. We try our hardest to kind of give you the experience of being on campus without being on campus. So that's another way to kind of get to know institutions that you may be considering as well as early as your junior year. Great. Thank you all so much for joining us. Um, when you go to close this window, there will be a link to a very quick four question survey and we'd appreciate any feedback you can provide. Um, this was just one of many sessions being hosted, so be sure to sign up for additional sessions. And in about a week, you'll be able to find this session's recording, as well as all of the other sessions recordings at strivescan.com slash W-A-C-A-C. So uh, thank you, everyone, and uh, have a good night. Bye. Thank you so much.